Okay, so if we do the minor chord, the minor chord, I'm going to get your camera going here, basically. The minor chord is just like the dominant chord, except you lift up the middle finger. That's the one on the root six. So if I'm doing, I'm going to get this going here, I'm going to do one, two, three, here's my loop. When I go to four, it's at the tenth fret. Five chord, twelfth fret. I'm using a dominant there. Cool. Didn't make a perfect loop there. So that's the four. Back to one. And then the five chord dominant, twelfth fret. second and third strings low and a high and end on a note. I was ending on the first string there for my finger. So that was the second and third string, a low and a high. I'm on the fifth fret, the fifth fret scale. We're in that key. Okay, that works, but I was doing a low and then a high on the third string and then the second. So I think that should be the fifth and the eighth fret, so you stay in the scale. And you can end on any of the notes. Just realize that those notes are going to sound different depending on the chord run. sound different, those ending notes is going to sound different over a different chord. Cool. Let's do another one. Try uh, your third and fourth strings and just do uh, the low notes. I did the third and fourth string, just the low notes. Different ending notes. 
Okay, now let's try doing a, a note and then doing a low and a high on the second and third string. So go like this. So hit a note and then do that cross between the second and the third string low to high. So. You can end on either a note. So there I could go. Or. Get the idea? When you're doing the cross, you have two notes to end on. So when you, when you do a note and play the cross track, either of those can be your ending note. Does that make sense? Yeah, so remember I was saying, when you do these licks, you can either practice doing a cross string and then landing on a note, vary that, or you can play a note and end on a cross string. And when you do the cross string, there's two notes there, so you can get some variety by where you end. You can go... Or... Get the idea? That was the same lick, I just ended on the second string instead of the third string. So if I'm doing... idea? So you get a lot of variety just by making these little changes. And I mean everything I'm doing here sounds musical, right? I'm just going... You can go on all day like this. Chain, take any two strings and they don't have to be adjacent strings. Try a low on the third string and a high on the fifth string. Try a low on the third string and a high on the fifth string, and then end on different notes. Wait, I'm doing, I'm doing a low on the third string and a high on the fifth string. So five on the third string and seven on the fifth string. I'm doing the high note on the fifth string, the seventh fret on the fifth string, and the low note on the third string. And five, or no, sorry, five on the third string, and seven on the fifth string. A low note on the third string, and a high note on the fifth string. seventh fret on the fifth string. My point here is they don't have to be adjacent strings. That's one low and high, but you're going to get a lot more mileage if you don't just play on adjacent strings. So I have a five on the third string and a seven on the fifth string. I'm ending in different places. set of strings. Here's my uh, uh, third string. Maybe I'll use my third string and first string. Cool, right? A different melody. It's a different set of notes. and end on a note, or you can start a note and then do that cross and choose either a note to end on. So I can go... Cool. Cool, you can really work that, and every time you make one of those 
little changes, it sounds like a different melody. It is a different melody. And I'm just trying to get, you know, everything I do to be rhythmic. So, triple and triple and or duplets. Now quadruplets. Cool. That was quadruplets. Da, 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 da. Triplets. practice through this you feel like you like you can do it and there's nothing creative about that it's not like you're trying to find anything magic it's just about really learning it you know learning each one of those possible things you have four possibilities four high or two highs two lows one high and one low one low and one high and you can do them at duplet triplet quadruplet sextuplet Octuple, you can do it in five, you know, groups of fives, you can do, you know, quintuplets and any other, you know, breakdown. But, you know, those, those are certainly enough. And you choose a string, you choose what, which of the highs and lows you're going to get, you choose a triplet, and end it on a solid note. If you don't like the note you're ending on, do, do it again and on a different note. Cool? And, you know, the idea is you get, to, you get used to what they're all going to sound like and how to, you know, how to make it flow. Some of them sometimes won't sound as good as others. And you just kind of get used to feeling that and you start to develop a sense of what's going to happen when you do those things. Cool? You like it? Do you think that's enough? Enough to practice right now? I, you, you can spend forever mastering this. I mean, you can spend, I mean, really, I mean, that, obviously it's a big part of learning to play guitar. And it's not just cross-string things, but I think the cross-strings are the, the most productive thing to learn. Because look, all we've been doing is sitting in one scale right now. You never think of that. Like when you just look at that scale, you think of this. What can I do with that? You know? You don't really think about it as much. And I think the cross strings are I mean like I said, you know, the math of it is you have four of those per group of strings. Now you have five groups of adjacent strings. You have four groups of strings that are one one apart. You have um, three strings that are two strings apart. You have another one where that, that's a, additional. So you end up getting um, you know, about, uh, what do we say, about 50 licks total. Just licks. Now, that's 50 of those cross-string things. But then you also have 12 ending notes for each of those. You know, so you end up getting 600 potential licks. And these are really, I mean, decisive individual licks. They're, um, you know, just the, the, the cross-string and an ending note. Or a beginning note. So really you should double that because you can do it as beginning and then you can end on either one so really you know we're starting to talk already about you know several thousand possible individual licks and then when you start saying okay well i can do any of eight different rhythms then you have tens of thousands of licks 
And then when you combine those, they start to become millions and billions. One combination, you already have you know, hundreds of millions of potential licks that you have just by combining two of those phrases. Um, and that's just doing rolls. And that's and that's really not the full number because you're never really just going to play straight, you know, straight duplets and straight triplets and straight straight couplets. You're going to you're going to mix all these things up, you know, and so it really becomes infinite when you start putting all the you know the possibilities together. And that's just doing rolls. Like if you if you do never do anything but rolls, um, and really like internalizing how many options there are and playing. You know how many options there are, and and working and, and getting those to be in rhythm is where the work needs to be. Getting the technical ability to go da 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 or da 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 you know really really quickly, is is where the work is. And you know then you know making those choices in real time, choosing I'm going to do you know two high notes on a on the first and second string. I'm just doing this for the sake of the video, so we talk about everything we, we said today. You know, making the the actual choices. To, to go, I'm going to do, and they should be intentional, I'm going to do two high notes on the first and second string, then I'm going to do, you know, a low and a high at triplet speed, and then I'm going to do quadruplets, you know, on two low notes on the fourth string, and I'm going to choose an ending note. Um, you know, making that the run that you decide to pull off and that you actually pull off, so it's not, um, you know, just some haphazard thing that you fell into by putting your fingers on the frets. And it's never this back and forth, back and forth scale thing. Is that cool? Um, and that, that should make some real changes. It should make some profound changes. And you can do the same thing with all the outside playing. You can do the same thing with all of, you know, all of these are things that can be played on any string, any fret. They're ideas more than learn this lick and go. And that's what most people get drawn into when they're learning how to play lead. You know, I think everybody kind of gets like a couple tasty licks they know they can play well, work those things out. And you know, then they're stuck playing those fifty licks the rest the rest of their lives. That's what I see most often with people when they learn try and learn to improvise and take solos. That they they get like their favorite handful of licks, and every song they play, they're you know they're doing those same licks. You know, and you want to learn to think by doing this. You really learn to think about how to tear that scale apart in every way possible, and and do interesting things. And and it should be fun that way because you're never you're never stuck playing one thing. Cool. Let me turn this up. This is about seventeen minutes of video.